So I guess I will just start. <laughs> so my name is uh, Dirk Johnson, and uh, otherwise known as Yeshe Sanglam, by the name that Lama gave me. Um, I don't know a lot, but I've been trying to learn for a while, so. I'll share with you what I know, and maybe we can just uh, have have a little fun. I hope and approach it that way because uh, because this this is tantra, you know. It's not it's, this isn't uh, wearing hair shirts or anything. We're, we're here to have a party. This is a tantric thing. So uh, what I'm going to talk about is the uh, Manjushri Namasangiti, and it's translated various ways. The, the Manjushri is the one thing that's always in it. And then Nama, Namas, Nama is a, a Sanskrit word for names uh, in the plural here. Uh, sam, sam can means, means all together, uh, everything together. And Giti means a uh, song or to sing, depending on how it's placed. Here, I, I haven't, I honestly, I have, I have not thoroughly examine this as a compound, which is what it is, and Sanskrit compounds have their own ways of functioning. So I uh, don't suggest the the uh, translation of singing together the song of Manjushri's names uh, as a real translation, but I think that's I think that's a lot of what it is and what we can do with it. I'm, I'm not saying that if I were to publish a text, I would name it that, but for this talk, I'm naming it that, singing together the names of Manjushri. And uh, what is uh, this? Uh, you know, it sounds like I know the first time I heard it, I thought <laughs> I thought what we, what it would do was to have some opening stuff, right? Like like the like the beginning of the Heart Sutra. You got this opening stuff happens, like any sutra or tantra. Tantras operate very much like the sutras. So you get, I, I figured you'd have this opening stuff, and then there'd just be this long list of names that you would have to chant. But that's that's not what this text is. Uh, it's uh, it's it's a uh, it's a teaching of uh, requested at the, the beginning the beginning of this uh, just as in the Heart Sutra we've got uh, Shariputra asking of Vadapiteshwara about uh, how someone should train if they're a Bodhisattva. Here we have Vajrapani and his retinue, who is also in, within the context of this Tantra, Vajrapani is also identified with Vajradhara. So, and ultimately they're all identified with Manjushri and Manjushri is identified with all of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And it's all, uh, all of the absolutely non-dual uh, and it all kind of disappears in the end. But uh, for, the, for, for our relative practice, we've got Vajrapani asking Shakyamuni, in the for, Vajrapani in the form of Vajradhara, asking Shakyamuni Buddha to teach him and his retinues in order, the, very importantly, the reason he's asking uh, Shakyamuni to teach him this, not like he really needs to learn it, uh, but he's asking Shakyamuni to teach him this in order that he will, so that he will be able to, and 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 his retinue will all be able to liberate all sentient beings. So this is the re, the reason uh, he's requesting the teaching, and so Shakyamuni Buddha is then uh, giving him this teaching. Uh, what we're going to sing today is part of the request for the teaching. Uh, we don't really have much time for that, but uh, so we we won't get too deep into this tantra. But I want to go over it a little bit. Uh, it, it, it covers uh, the way Alex Wayman talks about it. I'm sorry if I'm being not very conversational. Alex Wayman talks about it uh, sort of like uh, as he, he analyzes it in various ways according to a variety of different uh, commentators from the Indian tradition. And then he also translates the Tibetan text and, and the Sanskrit text and compares them. So uh, that I, if you ever, I, I do suggest if you're really interested in this, that you probably want to read this. But I'll I'll, I'll post a link. Uh, actually, let me do that now while I'm thinking about it because I don't want to forget. I want to post a link in chat here. 
Um, let's see what's going on. I've got to close that down. Pardon me. I meant to get ready for it, and then I didn't. Let me see. Uh, RigPod Wiki has uh, what is actually a comprehensive list. So because of that, I'm not necessarily promoting RigPod Wiki. I'm just but they do have the comprehensive list. And I'll post a link to it in chat here. And they can be a good source for a lot of things, tantric also. Anyway, so there's a link to all of the translations. Uh, Wayman, uh, Alex Wayman goes into a, uh, he, he extensively translates Naropa's commentaries all of Naropa's uh, uh, all of Naropa's quotations in his Avadra Tantra commentary, and then he says, but he comments even more than that. Then on the Havadra Tantra commentary, he quotes even more in the Kala Chakra commentary, but he doesn't he doesn't list them or translate them. But he probably didn't have room because of the, it had to be published. And so then the other, so it's of the highest, it's of the highest tantric class. This is, this is in, in the Nyingma, I'm not sure where it is in the, in the, in the Glugpa, where it exists in the Glugpa conjure, where, where its position is, but I do know it's also held in the highest regard in, in both, in, in all four schools of Tibet. In, in the Nyingma school, though, this is the first, this is the first tantra in the tantric section of the conjure. So that's that's how important this tantra really is, and although it is of this uh, supremely high class, uh, it's not considered that you need a even need an empowerment to be able to recite this because the quality of it is such that uh, it's it's really what it is. is it's self secret. If you if you don't know what's going on at all, you'll read it. You won't have any idea what it's saying. <laughs> it's, it'll just it just won't make any sense to you anyway. So, but. Uh, what we're, we're going to do today uh, keeps taking removing it. Okay, and today, what are we going to do with it? We are going to sing, and uh, we'll just take. Uh, I'll I'll, sh I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a minute. But uh, each each verse, it's the the Nama is 162 verses with a few other little pieces of things attached to it. But it's 162 ver verses in what's called the Shloka meter. The Shloka meter is the primary meter, meter that say the Bhagavad Gita was written in, even, or or the uh, Mahabharata, the Ramayana. It's just it's a very standard. Uh, actually, so was the uh, uh, Mula Madhyamaka Karika by Nagarjuna was written in the Shloka meter, the root uh, texts of the Middle Way. So this is written in in a, a widely used, uh, pretty. It's like it's like the iambic pentameter of uh, India or of Sanskrit literature. Sort of, it might be wrong, not quite right, but it's close enough. And I'm going to also present two translations of. Uh, what we sing, anything that we sing, I'll give you two translations, one by Alexander Bergen and the other by Tokul Sherdor. They're very different from each other. Uh, they're all of the translations are all very different from each other. So, <laughs> so it's, um, and I gave you, there's the Rigpod Wiki, but you, you won't be able to get to it from here. So I give you the link. And I, what I proved prepared were verses six through 11. Uh, I don't know that we'll get that far because each verse, I started to talk about that, each verse of the shloka meter consists of four what are, what are called padas. There are four quarters. A pada means foot, but that's not what, it, it's not referring to foot in the way of Western metrics. So it's it's four, four quarters. <clears throat> and when they're printed in Western text, they're usually printed in two lines some, because well, actually, even in Sanskrit, if they're not all strung together, but uh, I'll, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. And please feel free to ask uh, questions as they arise. So that'll be part of, you know, if it takes a long time just to do, if we, all we can do is one shloka, that's all we'll do. If we can do all six, we'll do all six. And at the end, uh, I would like to talk to people about maybe having an interest in a regular practice of 
getting to sing part of this with the purpose ultimately of forming a, a little bit of a choir with that's I just this is with Lama's blessing I'm not just doing it so I might need somebody to just remind me of the time mm -hmm. so we have about what mm -hmm. 40 minutes maybe something like that okay and I'm gonna have to not look at you because this is yep I should have tested this out in Zoom. I didn't think of that. So here's uh, what I was talking about. Um, I can't see anything right now. So if you need to say something, please interrupt me verbally because I, I can't, won't be able to see raised hands or anything right now. <clears throat> so this is uh, the first shloka that we're going to do. Oh, is it? Did I? I think I made a mistake. Yes, I did. This is the first shloka we're going to look at. Um, and you can see, I, 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 I put this to music. It's very simple music. I don't, if you don't know how to read music, don't let this intimidate you. You can just use it just to keep track, sort of. Uh, you don't really need to read music to do this at all. There's nothing like that. But you can see I've numbered them 6A, 6B, 6C, and 6D. Those are the four quarters. And so each line is written as 6A, 6B is one line, and then 6C, 6D is the next line. And what we'll be singing here is uh, first in Alexander Bergen's translation, prostrated to the guardian, the vanquishing master surpassing all, the thusly gone one, the fully enlightened and standing in front, his palms pressed together, address these words. Or in Toko Schurder's translation, while bowing in reverence, they offered homage to the Tathagata Bhagavat, the Lord Bhagavat Tathagata, the perfect Buddha, and joining their palms together, presented themselves and made this request. So they, the they that's being referred to is Vajrapani and uh, Vajrapani's retinue. And so let's just take the first first quarter. It's by the way, this whole thing. Actually, now. This whole thing is only four notes, okay? There are only four notes. They're just arranged, and they, they constantly change. The rhythm changes, so it's this, these measures, if you do know music, then don't be confused by these measures because these measures don't fit normal Western music. The, it, this is a way of writing music that only really modern, modern composers use uh, in Western music because these measures are not of the same length. These, they, they would be broken up and it would create syncopation and stuff. So this is a way that's also used to write old music, like even, even Gregorian chant and stuff like that is used this way. That way, that these measures don't mean, you know, measure one and measure two are not the same length. So just the basic, this is in A minor, but, and this is also the, a, uh, tune that is used in uh, southern India to sing the Bhagavad Gita. What you might not know about the Bhagavad Gita, I just finished reading it, in, well, I finished reading three books of it in Sanskrit. What you might not know about the Bhagavad Gita is that it was a response to Buddhism largely. So I like using the Bhagavad Gita tune <laughs> for a Buddhist tantra. Anyway. <laughs> So we go, we just go, Pranamyanatam Sambudam Pranam, Pranamyanatam Sambudam Data, data, da, 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 It's very simple, see? I'm not saying it's easy. It's not really easy in the end, but it's simple. Da, da, so it's the you go this this note up one note down one note up one note up one note down one note down one note and then the same note. It's very straightforward. Da pranam yanatam sambudam 
And then, then, and that's the order of the of the of all of the measures on the left side of this music. All are in that order of note. The notes in all of that side are always that order. Now the time changes, but the order of the tones is the same. All all of the on the left side, it's always. And now I'm gonna have to move you so I can see it. Hey Dirk, it's Ellen. May I ask you a question before sure. you go? On? Do these sort of measures as you describe them, do they map directly to the translation in terms of like the phrases in the translation, the first couple? I wouldn't. I wouldn't take it too far because to 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 force yourself into the each pada in a translation into English, you're already Sanskrit to English is already very difficult because they're they 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 use dependent clauses, relative clauses, compounds. They they use all, the order of words. Like you you can put you can have the the we wouldn't have any idea what was going on in Sanskrit. You can tell what's going on. So, so I wouldn't be, but it's generally, generally. It, okay. It so, for example, and when we do this one that you just did, can we generally think that we're prostrating to the teacher, or the guardian, or something? Well, you, that we're offering homage. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank yeah. you. And if you wanted, if you wanted to prostrate while you were doing it, that I'm sure that would be that would be great too if you want. That's to. like rubbing your belly and patting your head at the same time. I think <laughs> well, you would have to memorize it. Thank and you. you might not you might not sing the tune at that point. You might just chant it. <laughs> so then the second half. Uh, by the way, there are only uh, also another thing that, uh, is that there are only two lengths of note. So we don't have to deal. Really, we're just uh, what, the way I wrote this is with half notes and quarter notes. And that's all there are. There are no eighth notes, no sixteenth notes, no whole notes. Just, just those. So it's it's very straightforward. I'm not saying it's easy because I still don't really have it down. I've been playing it for quite some time, but but it's very straightforward. So and then you got now we're going to drop down to the to the E below the A, or uh, and also if this is a difficult uh, uh, range for you, even like singing an octave above me. I could write I could write it out for you uh, like a fifth above or something easier easier to sing that'll still harmonize if it if you need it for your vocal range. But here, Bhagavan Tam Tatatam. So see, the second half always has that order of notes. So the whole line is Pranam Yana Tam Sam Budam Bagu one Tam Pranam yinna tam sang pudam padu wan tam gutta guttam. Pranam yinna tam sang pudam padu wan tam gutta guttam. And then the next line. Kirtan jari puto budwa iduma ashtito grata. Kirtan jari puto budwa iduma ashtito grata. So the whole thing, 
Let's move on to the next one because it does help to have a little more anyway. And since it's the same notes, it's not like we're moving on to something completely different. But you can see that even though it is the same notes, it is different. <laughs> so uh, the first the first verse. Madita yama. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. I lost my muting, so I got confused. Madita yama mata yama me vipo. In a way, I uh, many of many of the two halves are separated by a slight pause, um, but not. Like 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 when I'm in, in in like this first line, I I I never put a pause between them. I won't put a pause unless there's a half note at the end of the first line. It's because it's anyway. So just that's just a note that why I did that whole line by itself because I think it's just I'm in fact from here on I'm just going to do the whole line. Okay. <laughs> Madita yama mata ya adu kampa yame vipo. Madita yama mata ya adu kampa yame vipo. Madita yama mata ya adu kampa yame vipo. Now we did that three times. Let's do the second half three times. Maya jala bi sambodim ya dala pi buvam ya am. Maya jala bi sambodim ya dala pi buvam ya am. Maya jala bi sambodim ya dala pi buvam ya am. Because I screwed up the timing at the beginning, I'm going to do it one more time. Ma, ma, ya, ja, la, bi, sam, bo, dim, ya, ta, ta, bi, po, bam, ya, am. And then that's, uh, O Master, according to Alexander Bergen, O Master, the all pervasive, for my benefit, my purpose, from affection toward me, so that I may obtain manifest enlightenment from illusion's net. So that's a couple of. Uh, ubiquitous Lord for our, and then by Toko Shurdor, ubiquitous Lord for our benefit, for our welfare, out of loving concern for us. Explain to us how to attain manifest perfect awakening through the magical network. Dirk, I have a sure. question. Okay. Um, so on the fourth pod, pod um, when you 70. start, 70, uh, when you start that, is there some pronunciation thing that changes with uh, the the first ya and the second ya? Did you say ja and then ya? Did I screw it up? No, no, <laughs> I don't know. Should, should, they they should both be ya. They're both okay. ya. Okay, they're both ya. Yeah. Thank you. I might have I might have said ja, but they're both ya. Thank you. All right, so let's move on to the next one. We can always come back. If there's no prohibition against going back. So eight, and I should have done this at the beginning of the last one, so I'll do it at the beginning of this one. For the welfare and attainment of the peerless fruit for all limitless, limited beings sunk in the swamp of unawareness, their minds upset by disturbing emotions. And this is where you can see that it is really couplet by couplet anyway. I mean, this kind of, this is really one verse, shloka by shloka. The trans, they're trying to do that in the translation. So they, they don't do it 100%, but they really try hard. Uh, 
and then Toko Shirdor, to heal all sentient beings whose minds are troubled by disturbances and who are mired in the mud of ignorance so that they might obtain the highest fruition. Yes, those are very different. <laughs> More different than the other ones were. Uh, they might also be working from somewhat different texts. I don't know. Ajnan pan kamagnanam krisha ya kulujetasam. Hitaya sawasat wanam adutarapalaptaye. Hitaya sawasat wanam adutarapalaptaye. Did I speed up? Then the whole thing. Seems pretty easy. Derek, uh -huh. Ellen again with a question. In in eight A, is the first nya as opposed to the second one? Does it have? Does that little mark suggest it? Yeah, that that's uh, that's more like nya nya. Okay, thank you. Nya and then na okay. nya na. I I now I'm not very good at keeping those straight. I I, I try to, but I I make mistakes. So. But yeah, that's nya and na, and of course anybody who is really interested I'll also give you a key to Sanskrit pronunciation that really goes through all of these in the transliteration. Oh, I didn't do the whole thing, did I? Now, in my Sanskrit class, there was a woman who like that pa, where it's in 8D, anuttara palataye. She could, she would, she, her pronunciation was so good, but mine is just so sad. And uh, so nine, oh, fully enlightened, vanquishing master, guru of wanderers, indicator, knower of the great close bond and reality, foremost knower of powers and intents. Elucidate, please. For my, for me, the Sanskrit seems easier but <laughs> than, than that translation. Oh, fully enlightened, vanquishing master, guru of wanderers, indicator, knower of the great close bond and reality, foremost knower of powers and intents, elucidate, please. And then Tolko Shurdor, perfect Buddha Bhagavad, guru of beings, teacher, knower of the true nature, the great Samaya, with your supreme understanding of their ideas and abilities, please teach us. <clears throat> Prakasa yatu sambudo bhago wan sashta jidgat guru. So here's a good example, this line. Um, every now and then the the writer uh, took a liberty and added an extra syllable. So that always has to be accounted for when you're singing. And so I in this case I just doubled I doubled it on the Bhagavan uh, because it fit well. But I, I also chose, partially chose these six verses because it kind of gives a little bit of everything that happens in one way or another, uh, like the nine syllables. I'm sorry, I keep going faster. 
Prakashayatu Sambudo Gagawan Shashtajigad Guru Prakashayatu Sambudo Gagawan Shashtajigad Guru Prakashayatu Sambudo Gagawan Shashtajigad Guru All right, there we go. Trying to do that line one more time. Prakashaya to Sampudo, Pago one Shashta Jagad Guru. Now that's Prakasha Ya to Sang. That those those M's with the dot under them, it, it, it's complicated. If you mainly if you just do it as kind of an indefinite sort of nasal uh, maybe a mm, mm, some kind of sound mm, you'll be okay but it, it it actually changes depending on what follows it so uh to sung buto paga one baga one because it's one shas that's one word so th th those are actually together so you get that wine shas ta jagad guru now you'll hear in uh, most, 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 almost all, uh, really, of the Hindu chants of Sanskrit. Uh, they almost always, for that Anuswara. I mean, uh, anyway, if, if the the H with a dot under it, they almost always do it as aha instead of ah. They'll go aha. They'll repeat. Or ihi, the repeat whatever the uh, syllable, or uhu, uhu, like so it, it'll be guruhu, uh, and then the next line down paraha is what they'll do. Uh, I wasn't trained to do it that way, and uh, uh, philologically, it's it's not probably how it it, it, it was done for until some time. Uh, so I always do the guru, plus it also also fits the fits the metrical scansion better. Dirk, <laughs> so. Dirk, this is Sue. Hi, Sue. Hi. Um, could you um, do the 9C and 9D, the musical, you know, the tune part? I'm, <coughs> excuse me, I'm um, a little bit confused between the two and the rhythm, the rhythm between 9C and 9D, just right between oh, after did the I, bar actually, I thought I didn't, I, I'm sorry, I thought that I hadn't done 9C and D yet. Oh, well, maybe you didn't. Maybe that's why I didn't yeah. hear it. Because <laughs> what, what I did was I did 9A and 9B nine, nine times, much. and then I did it a fourth time because I got confused. I made a mistake in the pronunciation, then I forgot where I was. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I was lost in my, because you didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done that. That's why I didn't look I'll do that. I'll do that right. now. <laughs> Thank you. Mahasamaya tatwajna indraya shaya vipara Mahasamaya tatwajna indraya shaya vidpara. Mahasamaya tatwajna indraya shaya vidpara. I'm going too fast, I'm sorry. Mahasamaya tatwajna indraya shaya vidpara. Is that better? Yep, Sue? that's good. Thank you. Okay. And then the whole thing. So just Prakashaya to Sambudo Bhaga one Shashta Jagad Guru Mahasamaya Tatwaja Indraya Shayu Vidara. And then Eric, yeah. you want me to ask another question, please? Uh huh. This is so fantastic, but there's so many things in it. The, about the one before? It doesn't matter. Um, okay. In the in this sort of, I would call it transliteration. I don't know if that's right. The transliteration of the Sanskrit. Yeah, that's what it there is. Are this no is markings, the... There are no markings on the syllables per se that tell you how long they are. Is that true? <laughs> That uh, well, it tells you if if the syllable is long by nature, you know. Okay, uh, if 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 there's a long mark over a, over a vowel, 
that means the syllable is long okay. by nature. That's what it's called, long by nature. So in this and one, have, what about the yeah, yeah. There are other ones that are they're long. Let me. Uh, they're long. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> there's. There's. I'm t what you're asking is how to do Sanskrit scansion, which is actually very close to Greek scansion, so it's pretty easy. <laughs> uh, so long by position is if if there are two if two uh, consonants are together, it'll cause the uh, it'll cause the uh, it'll cause the syllable to be long. So when you get, at the, let's go to the very beginning on 10a. Pagawaj. See that wa, a is short, but you yeah. still have a long syllable because it's waj, because it would be waj jnya. So that waj, it means the syllable ends, the way they look at it, the way it's, the way it's easiest to look at probably, the way it's usually taught, is that if, if there are two syllables, the first syllable ends in a consonant, and if a syllable ends in a consonant, it's long. Yeah. Yes. You'll notice that this jnya would, it really would only be long. It would be short if it didn't have a long a in it. Got it. Got it. Super cool. And then that na is short because it's followed by a ka with a long a in it, which would have been short if it didn't have a long a in it because it's followed by ya, but that ya is followed by sya. So the S makes the YAS, turns it, makes it a long one. Wow. And I'm really good. I'm really glad you used half notes and quarter notes so we don't have to know that. That way you don't have to do that. That's right. Okay. And I did that for myself as much as anything. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Because when we, when we read the Bhagavad Gita, we did not use half notes and quarter notes. We just had to sing it. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Fortunately, she doesn't think we should have to sing it reading Devanagari. <laughs> which in some ways would be easier, except that I'm still, although my Devanagari is pretty good, I'm still not smooth, and it's still easier for me to read transliteration. So, so 10 is uh, Alexander Bergen's uh, translation. Regarding the enlightening body of deep awareness, the vanquishing master, the great crown protrusion, the master of words, the embodied deep awareness that is self-produced, the deep awareness being Manju Shri, or Tolko Shurdor, about the wisdom being Manju Shri, the Bhagavat's wisdom kaya, the great Ushnisha, the master of words, the wisdom kaya that is self existing. Now, here I just want to make a comment to, just to clarify this a little bit because um, Alexander Bergen translates Ushnisha as great crown protrusion, uh, and I'm not criticizing that, but the Ushnisha is the, is the, 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 the protrusion, the crown protrusion on the top. And it's also, the Ushnisha level is also the highest level, see? So that's all bound up in here. <clears throat> So the first line, Babu was Yanakayash Yamahosh Nishash Yabish Pate. Babu was Yanakayash Yamahosh Nishash Yabish Pate. Babu was Yanakayash Yamahosh Nishash Yabish Pate. Then uh, ten C and D. Manju Shri Jana Satwa Jana Muti. Sorry, that's T. Manju. I'm going to start over. Manju Shri Jana Satwa Jana Muti Swagyambuva. Manju Shri Jnana Sattva Sjjana Muti Swayam Bhuva Manju Shri Jnana Sattva Sjjana Muti Swayam Bhuva And then the whole thing Babu Vajjana Kayashya Mahushni Shashya Gishpate 
And I'll just keep moving on. Interrupt me if you need something. <clears throat> and then 11, this is the last one. <clears throat> the, super, the superlative concert of his names with profound meaning, with extensive meaning, with great meaning, unequaled and supremely pacifying, constructive in the beginning, middle and end. Concert, Sangiti, right? Sangiti is like concert with together, you know, with, with sing, with noise, <laughs> whose name, <clears throat> whose name is the supreme expression of perfection, whose meaning is vast, whose meaning is profound, whose meaning is unrivaled in grandeur and ultra, utterly tranquil, virtuous at first, mm -hmm. in the middle, and in the end. So that's the end of the request there. Gambira Tamuda Tartam Tamasam Ham Shivam Gambira Tamuda Tartam Tamasam Ham Shivam Gambira Tamuda Tartam Tamasam Ham Shivam Adi madyant karyani na sangiti bhutamam. Now that N and the neem at the end of 11C is is produced with the tongue uh, on the back of the palate. Neem, neem, neem. You got nya, na, ne. <laughs> Adi mayan de kalyan nim nam sanghi ti bhutamam. Adi mayan de kalyan nim nam sanghi ti bhutamam. So you see the sanghiti is right there on 11D and the whole thing. Gambira Tamudara Tam Tamasam Ham Siwam Adi Madian Kayan Nim Nam Sam Giti Mutamam. So I had thought that this might be a nice thing for people to, to sing in the in the temple right before Lama teaches, like the request of from us as Manju, as Vajrapani, Vajradhara, to the Buddha requesting teaching for liberation of all sentient beings. But uh, if we do it as together as a chorus, uh, of course we can select a different passage or whatever. But that's what I picked for today. And now, just for the sake of complete being complete, uh, I'm going to go through the whole thing one time. By myself, it takes like a minute and a half to do this at, this, at, a, at, a, at a really comfortable pace. When I push it, it's, I can do it in a minute. Pranam yinna tam sam pudam bhagu van tam tam Kirtan jali puto budwa yigamahashti tograta Maritaya mamataya anukampaya nevipo Maya jala visangodim yadala bibuvam yaham Ajnana, Ajnana Pantha Magnanam Krishaya Kula Chetasam Itasaya Vasatvanam Anuttarapalaptaye Prakashaya to Sambudo Bhagavan Shashta Jagat Guru Mahasamaya Tatwajna Indraya Shaya Vidya.
परम बाधु वज्ञान काष्ठे मंजूश्वीज्ञान सात्वाश्यूते स्वयं पुवाक् and with that i also have to uh, thank in front of everybody else thanks sue because this notation is the direct, direct result of my conversation with Sue, who suggested I use this instead of... I just want to say then, Dirk, um, this is absolutely fantastic. You did an awesome, awesome job, and I'm just so excited about it. And I'll talk to you on the telephone. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, let me see. I don't think I've... Did I put anything else on here? I don't think I... No, that's the end of my presentation. Dirk, this is Daniel. I have a, a novice question about the the rating of the tantras into like highest, uh, medium, lowest, whatever. You mentioned that this is the highest class tantra. Can you yep. sp speak to the classification of tantras a little bit? Uh, well, okay. Uh, well, there there are uh, uh, two main systems of tantra that are used. Uh, there's the uh, four tantra system and the not and the uh, in the sixth tantra system, sorry, <laughs> I started counting different things. Um, the the four tantra and the sixth tantra, and uh, the the sarma schools, so the Glukpa, the kaju, and the sakya all use the four tantra, and the nyingma also can be classified according to the four tantra, yeah. which is that uh, you've got the the lowest tantra is the kriya tantra, and the reason it's 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 a tantra that's hard to distinguish in many ways from uh, from a sutra that describes ritual uh it's it's it, so it's not low like the the uh the manjushri uh what's it, the manjushri mula the root the root tantra of manjushri is 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 a is that kind of tantra and you can find a translation of that uh at eighty four thousand. and then and then as they move up they get farther away from ritual being the most important thing See, in the Kriya Tantra, they're explaining ritual. And so you got ritual, ritual cleanliness, and, and we try to maintain ritual through the, just, just as, just as uh, uh, we, we maintain in the Mahayana, we maintain the paths of the Hinayana. In the Vajrayana, we maintain the paths of, of, of the uh, Mahayana. In the in the in the lower tantras, we we continue. It's like continuous with the Mahayana, and then with the higher tantras, it's continuous with the lower tantras. So it's not it's the, that classification is not meant like oh well, I'm practicing the good tantra, you're just practicing the crappy one. It's not like that. Uh, so the farther up, the highest yoga tantra is a class that begins. It's easier to see in the in when you look at it in the Nyingma, it's easier to sort of see how it works just because they use three for highest yoga tantra instead of just one. And the, so in the Nyingma, you got the Maha Yoga, the Anuttara Yoga, and the Dzogchen, or the three, uh, which are the same as highest yoga tantra, ultimately. Um, so the when you when you start getting into generation stage practice uh, and uh, uh, completion stage practice and Mahamudra and Dzogchen, then now you're now you're in the highest yoga tantra. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you very much, Dirk. I had one more question though, um, related <laughs> to the the singing. Is do you have have you like recorded yourself playing and singing it so that you can make that available to anybody who wanted to like. Uh, I don't know, maybe like sing along. Yeah, like practice on their own or something like that. I haven't, but this is being recorded, right? And I think this will go on YouTube. Yeah, it, it would be really, I would be, I would love to have like uh, just a, just a straight up, just a song of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sing. I'll, 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 rec I'll record something. That'd be awesome. Thank you. 
<clears throat> I'll try to do it on a day when I have better <clears throat> better vocal control. <clears throat> oh, let me let me change my I We lost your sound, Dirk. Yeah, I muted myself when I was trying to fix my sound. I had uh, my my microphone wide open because I wanted you to be able to hear my guitar which maybe wouldn't have been able to if I had used the standard. So I'm sorry if there was extra noise. Uh, any Anybody else have any comments or questions or anything? Hey, it's Ellen again. I, I uh, echo what Sue said. This is fantastic. It was very fun to do it and it's a learning experience. So thank you for helping us. I, I did have a question too. In the beginning, it seemed like you showed a book and then you put a link to a wiki site. Is there actually a book that one can get? Oh, this, uh, what, do you, what do you mean a book? Well, you there, should picture this book? something. You mean yeah, this book? that. I thought you were going to get it. Also, that'll also, that's also on the wiki site. Oh, okay. I didn't see it, but I'll look more for it. Yeah. It's, this is Alex. This is the Alex Wayman. It's kind of hard to use because of the format, but you can see see he what he does is he uh, he gives it in the Tibetan, he gives it in Sanskrit and his English translation, and then he translates a bunch of notes from a common from commentators. Wow, that's cool. He also gives his introduction is really extensive, where he goes through the what he calls you know the seven mandalas of the he he analyzes it pretty thoroughly in a bunch of different ways. Yeah. And so he considered himself a Buddhist practitioner, but this is what he considered to be his practice. Thank you. So he did a really thorough job of it. <laughs> so is anybody interested in uh, forming a chorus? Hey, Dirk, this is Susan. Um, that was gonna be my question is, how would that work? Well, I would have to ask someone to lead it in the temple. I mean, I could, uh, oh, you mean, how would we practice? But I think we would have to practice online so we wouldn't really hear each other. Uh, but we could train to it. And then uh, if other people would, if we could maybe practice. Uh, that's a good question. I, I'm leaving that open for discussion. But I think that it wouldn't shouldn't be necessary for me to always be there, but I'll help. I'll practice with people to get used to singing it. And then maybe in the temple, you sing it without me. So you don't think that you could be? Or I could sing remotely, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. right. I mean, you're not always gonna be available, but you're- No, and it would be great if we could have some times where we practice where even if, I, I don't know if, if if you if you feel like it would be good to have me lead, I'm happy to do it. But if, if you don't feel like you need me, it's also okay. And, but if we could have a group of people in the temple uh, if singing together would be nice. And I'm happy to lead that from here. Yeah, I think for a while at least, and I see JD is also thinking the same thing. It would be really difficult to do without you for a while, anyway. Yeah. Right. Okay. No, I'm happy. I'm happy to do. I just don't want to hog the center light. <laughs> I just don't want to take charge. That's all. Hog away. <laughs> I know I always confuse people because I just don't like to take charge. <laughs> so that's all that is. I don't mind doing it at all. I just want to give other yeah, people the and, and I don't know, maybe Sue, since she has the background, right? Could yeah, also Sue would be, do it. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. She'd hey, Sue, what do you think? So does Sue want to chime in? I don't know. She might have left. I don't know. No, she's in the temple. Hello, uh, is someone oh, in the saying temple. something to me? This is Sue again, Dirk. Um, I just was going to say, Dirk, I'm surprised you're in charge. Um, but uh, I think, yeah, if you if you would lead on a Sunday at the beginning, you know, before service, like you suggested for a little bit, um, you know, I could be there to to help do it. But 
you know, and sing along or whatever. Okay. You can you can conduct. Yeah, right. I think it would be good to practice sort of informally though first, because I think we could could get it down better if we did that. Oh, oh, definitely. We okay. we definitely need to practice first, and uh, that's the other thing. Now we now we need a, a session that we can agree on that people who say they're going to do it actually do it. <laughs> that's the that's right. the hard part. And that's maybe really... maybe a hard copy of um, a, a way of getting a hard copy of the uh, of the text, so to speak. Oh, I'll give you a hard copy of the entire piece of music. I'll give you a hard copy of what we did today. I'll give you a hard copy of the ex ex extract that I created this out off of too. So I can give you a hard copy of just, it's basically two pages in a PDF. What we did today, not quite two pages, but. Yeah, that would probably be a good way to start anyway. Yeah, but I'm also happy to give you the whole piece of music. Uh, you way too much for me at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and and I would give it to Sue, except that to Sue, Sue, I can't email it. <laughs> well, you know, I'm wondering, Dirk, that's what I was going to call you about. Is it possible, you know, to, to print me out a copy and send it e uh, slow mail? <laughs> well, what I was going to do is ask Patty. Or email it to Daniel, he says. <laughs> Daniel just said you can email him anything and he'll print it out and give it to me. Okay. Part of what stopped me from doing it is there are a couple of errors in it that still need to be fixed, and I just haven't gone into the composition program and fixed the errors yet, so I'll do that. When I'm playing it, I just know there are errors, and I just play, play them correctly. But Okay. Um, should we, I guess we better come up with a time by email, uh, but maybe I'd better take a small list of people to email. You can add me. For practice? Um, well, you, can add, you can add Susan. Uh, do you, I don't have a pen. <laughs> okay, just a second here. Because I do everything on the computer. I don't use pens. <laughs> Let me just uh, create a new document here. And I'll probably just remember anyway, but just to be safe, so I don't forget anybody. That's okay. So Susan. And Kathy. Kathy. JD. Am I assuming Ellen too? Ellen, please, yeah. And you need my uh, my baritone. Yes, yes. We this need more than one baritone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And anybody else just uh, email there, me. We can't have a choir without Doug. Can't, it's, it's, I, that's what I thought Doug might want to do it, but he's not saying he does. Well, I'll include him anyway. He can just ignore my emails. <laughs> okay, well. Uh, I and you've got that Sue, right? Well, Sue, well, Sue, 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 yeah, Sue, can, Sue, Sue, Sue won't join us for our online practices, I don't think. Oh, That's true. Um, Dirk, I just wanted to say I, I'll do it sometimes, but I, I never know what my life is like, so I, I don't want to let you down, you know. All right, so well, I'll add you to the list, but we won't okay. depend on you. <laughs> yeah, it's Ellen. Okay. I'm, I'm very interested, but I also would vote for something other than every week, you know, something maybe a little more ad hoc or spread out more because that, that's a big commitment and I would probably fail at that too. Okay. It's just hard to do a band if you don't rehearse. I've been in, I've been in bands where the guys wanna go, they go, oh, let's just smoke a joint instead. <laughs> Well, like, we no, a bad band. No, without, let's rehearse. Yeah, we could be <laughs> a sorry. bad band without rehearsing, probably. But that'd be good, yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. You know what would be good about not rehearsing? Because that way you'd be put on the spot and then you'd want to rehearse. 
<laughs> you'll be embarrassed and that'll that that'll in, in, in that'll <laughs> make you rehearse better no but that's that's good we just do it as much as we can i was only saying I wasn't really trying to say you have to make a commitment to be there every time. Otherwise, we'll treat you as a deserter and we'll, we won't like you anymore. I just meant that it, it, there, there needs to be a little bit of an idea of a commitment to it. Otherwise, it just won't, won't, won't happen. It's like studying a language is that way. God, the commitment I had to make to Sanskrit. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Put me down for I don't want to do it. I don't want to be involved at all. So. Uh, never I, see me. Don't worry, you didn't say you okay. wanted to. So okay, I just want to make sure that there's no no email. No, be not clear, to you. clear. I don't want to be ridiculed for smoking pot and not practicing. No, we're just going to ridicule you anyway, <laughs> just because that's what we do. That's all. Anyway, I think we better go to dedication, eh? Before it gets out of control. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna change my.